Hi, good afternoon. My name is Caitlin McKnight, and today I'll be doing my presentation for Intro into Humanities with Professor Espinoza over my recent field trip to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. Now, whenever I think of the word museum, I think of a building dedicated to the quiet study and appreciation of artworks, artifacts, people, culture, and even the world that we exist in to today. My favorite museum is perhaps the Holocaust Museum, also in Houston. The atmosphere there was definitely heart-wrenching, but it did leave a very lasting impression on me and my family. But as we went to the Museum of Fine Arts of Houston, I found three pieces of art that really spoke to me, and I would like to elaborate on those a little bit more today. And this first piece is titled Virgin and Child with Saints Francis and Claire and Two Angels. This was created by an unknown Italian in 1340 to 1350 CE. And this is representative of the Italian culture, specifically the Sienis culture or region. And this was created right in the midst of the European Black Plague that was sweeping across all of Europe right on the tail end of the Middle Ages and on the cusp of the Renaissance period. In fact, the gold leaf that is used in this piece, this would later become very characteristic of the Italian Renaissance. And I chose this piece primarily due to its religious context as well as its iconography. St. Clair is featured down here in the bottle with a bottom with an oil lamp in her hand. And St. Clair, she was the first woman to follow and be embraced by St. Francis. In fact, she went on to become the first nun dedicated to living in poverty and following God as a servant. And the oil lamp in her hand alludes to her many miracles that she performed during her lifetime. This second piece of artwork here is titled Sarcophagus, depicting a battle between soldiers and Amazons warrior women. It was created by an unknown Roman in the time period of 140 to 170 AD. And this represents the Roman culture of the time. And I chose this piece specifically due to its scale. Now seeing this in person was absolutely impressive. Made totally out of marble, it weighs about five and a half thousand pounds. And we were told that there were certain clues about the artwork on the side that says that this was the final resting place of a Roman official, a Roman officer who was very high up within the army. And I could agree to that because as I was looking more into it, I discovered that there's a deep, rich lore uh, telling about Amazons and conflicts and in battles against the Greeks and then later the Romans. And that a battle scene like this would really call on and speak on the military officials sense of power and military prowess. This next piece is titled simply Scarab and this was created by an ancient Egyptian, an unknown artist and it was created between the years of 945 to 720 BC and it is very representative of the ancient Egyptian culture. Now, truthfully, I chose this piece because I recognized it instantly from pop culture. There is a movie titled The Mummy, where a bunch of black scarabs come from the walls and tear apart these treasure hunters. But as whenever I was looking more into this piece that I discovered that it had a lot of significant deep meaning with, for the ancient Egyptians. In fact, the scarabs are modeled after dung beetles, which the ancient Egyptians saw as a symbolic form of rebirth and regeneration because the dung beetles for them told the story of their sun god. So for the ancient Egyptians, every evening the sun died as it went under the horizon and their sun god Kepri would roll a new sun disk across the sky in the morning. And they got the symbolism for, for the dung beetle as they saw it rolling its ball of dung over the horizon. And I just thought that was extremely interesting. But as a whole, I found the museum to be very awesome, very cool. In fact, my children really liked the underground connecting tunnels, especially the rainbow one. Whenever I went, it was very crowded. That's why you could probably see that I had some in-person photos and then I had some that where I had to get the photo offline. 
but even when crowded it was really cool to see how everybody would come together and observe quietly and really soak in how many different cultures and just the skill of the artists that were there. In fact, I would say that as my pro, that it was so neat to see so many cultures represented and then also just the incredible skill that these artists had. Uh, a con that I listed though, however, was that it was fairly difficult to navigate the museum at times. In fact, I got turned around once or twice. But overall, I really enjoyed my trip to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, and I would like to go back one day without my kids in tow so that I really had time to soak up and appreciate some of the artifacts and to learn a little bit more about the artists and time period. And I hope today that you were intrigued and as interested by my choices as I was. Once again, my name is Caitlin McKnight, and I very much appreciate your time. Thank you.